love the saying we have at Easter? Alleluia, Christ is risen. And then everybody says, the Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. I just can't get enough of that. <laughs> Easter is such a pleasant, wonderful, powerful season. And we have so many images. In fact, I've just found a little chocolate Easter egg on my pulp. <laughs> it's a music sample. Easter bunnies are delightfully simple, are they not? The options are easy. There's just the two. You can either have cute and fluffy or chocolate. I prefer the chocolate version myself, personally. Either way, an Easter bunny is an Easter bunny. Is an Easter bunny. Is an Easter bunny. Is an Easter bunny. They really don't need a whole lot of description or explanation. We all know what to do with them. You either snuggle with them or you eat them before they melt. I commend to you all your favorite version of the Easter Bunny. I realize we might not all be comfortable entirely with the use of a rabbit as a symbol for Easter. You might be among those with a more orthodox theology of the resurrection of Christ, and that's great. There may also be some among us with still different interpretations of the resurrection and its meaning, and that's fine too. Those who think using rabbits as symbols of Easter is really, really wrong, we understand. We know what. There's a lot to say about Easter. Easter bunnies are delightfully simple, unlike Easter people. Easter people are delightfully complex. And Easter, to Easter people, can mean a lot of different things. Just take the Gospel readings, for instance. Read through the resurrection stories on your own in the different Gospel accounts, and you'll find a dizzying array of Easter descriptions. Just this Sunday alone, the lectionary schedule gives us two options for presenting the story of the resurrection of Christ. We can go with either John or Matthew. One might think, nah, it's an Easter narrative. They're all the same, but they're not the same story. John's description of the resurrection, in this one, we learn that Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed. By whom? I don't know. It's not written down. John doesn't even get into that. Magdalene runs off to tell the other disciples, thus becoming the first evangelist of the resurrection. And after running back to find the empty tomb, Peter and the other disciple returned to their homes, sad because Jesus wasn't there. During this time, Mary herself makes it back to the tomb and is overcome with grief. And then Jesus appears and shows great care and love and compassion for Mary Magdalene. She is gently encouraged by Jesus himself to go and tell the others about Jesus' defeat of death, thus leaving no question about the role of women in preaching the resurrection to the church. In spite of this, John's account is tinged with sorrow, sorrow, as he references weeping and sadness and grief about this very mysterious moment. In Matthew's version, eyewitnesses, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, were actually at the tomb when the resurrection moment happened. Matthew's version is dramatic, to say the least. There's an earthquake and catatonic guards and talking angels. And then Jesus gets this really great cameo reveal where he suddenly appears to them and says, greetings. <laughs> Matthew paints his portrait of the resurrection in tones of joy and excitement and laughter as Mary Magdalene and the other Mary rush to tell the other disciples about the good news. Those are just two of the options for us this year. In other years, we hear even more versions of what happened. Mark tells us about the role of women in funerary practices. 
Remember that stone that used to cover the grave entrance? It's mysteriously rolled away by someone or something else. The angel waiting in the tomb is described in human terms. He's youthful, which is interesting because angels are as old as creation itself. <clears throat> the Marys, according to Mark, are shocked and frightened by the resurrection, and they don't tell anyone. And then there's Luke. Luke offers us all the same things that Mark did, but he has a better casting agency and has two angels waiting in the tomb, and the disciples refuse to believe in the resurrection. It's all very confusing and complicated, is it not? It's all very contradictory, and no one can be entirely sure exactly what happened on this day that serves as the foundation for Christianity. Easter bunnies are looking pretty good right about now, aren't they? <laughs> Look, multiple ways of approaching Easter is exactly the way we ought to be approaching Easter. The multiplicity of feelings presented to us in the narratives honors the entirety of the human experience. We can find ourselves moved by such responses as sorrow, amazement, fear, joy, uncertainty, and hope. All of these expressions are valid. This is how we move through the experience of being children of God. The approach we take to the resurrection changes at different times and as a result of our own different life experiences. A faith denomination such as Christianity, which spans the whole globe and all the cultures of the world, simply must be able to hold a multiplicity of experiences, perspectives, and expressions. The core concept of the resurrection remains consistent across all these perspectives. Jesus always, faithfully, returns to his followers, all of them, all of the time. Our perspectives and feelings, varied as they may be, are never condemned. Rather, we are invited and encouraged to be transformed by our experiences and broaden our perspectives and thus understand the living God in new ways. Easter people, are complex and complicated. We come with widely different perspectives and experiences. We don't always agree with one another about how things are supposed to go. Just ask the gospel writers. Easter people, unlike Easter bunnies, are not mass produced and looking all exactly alike. And thank goodness for that. God validates the way we are created with all our inconsistencies. We were made to feel what we feel, to think the way we do, to struggle to understand, and to embrace change and transformation in our understanding of God. We learn and we grow, and that is a gift from God. We are counted amongst the forgiven, the restored, and the renewed by the same resurrection of Christ. What better way to demonstrate that God understands us and cares so deeply for us than to become one of us? As the incarnation of the perfection of God, Christ reveals the very best that we can be as human beings. We are not forgotten or abandoned by God because we are complex and complicated beings. On the contrary, there is joy in the heavenly places because we can be confused, fearful, uncertain, sorrowful, and that we can sometimes be easily amazed and mystified. God celebrates all of those things in us, even to the point of joining us in our experience of them. The differing versions of what exactly happened on that first Easter morning is good news. It takes multiple views of the same event to allow for the variety of God's children to see ourselves in the story of God's love for us. Are you a person who loves an exciting resurrection narrative? Great, there is a place for you in the household of God. Do you prefer to approach the glory of the risen Christ with fear and trembling? We've saved you a seat at the table. 
maybe you're skeptical of the whole thing. If that's the case, excellent. Asking critical questions helps us all grow. Regardless of how you understand the story that's presented, ultimately, all the Gospels end in the same way. Jesus returns and says to his disciples back then and says to us today, go, go into the world and gain experiences that change you and make you a better person more and more in the image of Jesus Christ. Be, be exactly as God made you to be, curious, changing, inquisitive, steady, solid, intelligent, questioning. Do, do as Christ taught us to do in whatever way that looks like for you. Do as Christ taught us to do to our neighbors, to be honoring, to be careful and gentle, be patient and kind. <clears throat> Jesus showed us all kinds of different ways to go and be and do and share the good news with one another. Now in his resurrected form, he leaves it to us to continue the work. What greater way could there be for God to love and encourage us than to reflect the beauty of our own creation back at us in the person of Jesus Christ. What we do in the world as disciples to the risen Christ doesn't have to be complicated to be effective. We can take the parts of the resurrection narrative, the ones that speak most directly to our hearts, and use that as a guide to how we might better understand our relationship with God and with one another. How we direct our lives from here will allow us to demonstrate God's love through Jesus in the places where the world needs it most. When such ministries spring up from our authentic selves, it can be easy. It does not have to be complicated. It can be as simple as a chocolate Easter bunny. And that is the good news. Amen.